Come, Lord Jesus, be near to the brokenhearted and save those whose spirits are crushed. Amen. It was in the early days of open heart surgery when those bypass procedures were still very innovative and very new and very awe-inspiring and a little bit frightening. As a very young student chaplain, I was assigned to visit someone the night before his open heart surgery and I went into the room imagining all of the concerns that he might be bringing to this moment, all the anxiety or fear or worry that might be stirring in him. And so I was more than a little bit surprised to discover that his greatest concern that he was able to express did not have anything to do with what I suspected. He opened up his hospital gown showed me the perfect tattoo covering his entire chest of Amelia Earhart and said that his greatest concern was that the surgeons would sew it back together perfectly. It seems like a kind of silly story. Yet underneath that, I think that man was, as we all do, yearning for things to be put right, to be healed from the inside out, for things to be back in order just exactly how they should be, for things to be reconnected and made whole. The people who first heard the words from the prophet Isaiah, which we hear this morning, were people who were also yearning for things to be restored and put back together and made the way they had been. Returning from exile, they had hoped to rebuild Jerusalem to its former glory, even though some of them had never seen that and had only heard about it as the generations had passed along. They had returned home and were disappointed at how difficult it was and how far short they fell of their great vision of restoration. They were mourning and wondering why it was that they couldn't put it all just right again. Scholars for generations have wondered whether these words from Isaiah were addressed to an individual, to a community of people, or to the whole people of Israel. And Christians have taken these words to apply particularly to Jesus, as we have heard him in Luke's gospel invoke this very passage as he begins to speak about his mission in the world and proclaims to the people that today these words have been fulfilled in their hearing. The whole range of possible ways of hearing and understanding and contextualizing these words from Isaiah allow us perhaps in that ambiguity to hear these words as words both of comfort to us and of call to us. And particularly to look at and sit with one phrase from this beautiful poetry of Isaiah, to bind up the brokenhearted. Heartbroken is not a word that I have frequently seen in headlines until recently, and it seems to appear more and more as a description of people and communities and our nation and our world in this particular time. We are aware of that heartbreak, the sadness, the burden of 
grief, and we are aware of brokenness as well. Each of us knows that heartbreaking loss that we experience now, whether it's in seemingly small but very significant things in our own lives or in the staggering, overwhelming, burdensome numbers that we hear day to day as the deaths from this pandemic continue to mount. We know that sense of loss and we live with it and in it and we look for words of comfort and strength as we try to pace ourselves and to endure to the end of this time, even as we see the possible light of that ending. We resonate and look for comfort in the face of this broken-hearted world. Beyond that, though, we also see the brokenness that has endured for generations, the devastation that has been there, the people whose lives have been broken and whose hearts have been heavy with the weight of oppression and discrimination, with the injustice of the world, with things that are beyond their control and yet limit and constrain their life, their energy, their spirit by the human limits which have been set for them. So we listen to these words both as comfort, comfort to us and to the whole world in a time of loss and heartbreak. We listen to these words as words of call as we imagine how we can touch other individuals who are knowing this time of loss to strengthen them, to touch them, to draw close to them and surround them with love in the face of things that are hard to bear. And also the call to look at our world now and as we move into the future looking for ways to be the people of God who respond to these beautiful, visionary, dreaming promises expressed by Isaiah that will allow the brokenness of our world to be knit back together, restored, put right, made in the glory that it was meant to be the wonderful binding together of humanity in the place of brokenness. In this Advent season, we point to the light and bear witness to it. We prepare the way of the Lord and try to make a straight path for that coming. The one we wait for, the one we long for, the one we open our arms to welcome, comes to us bound and wrapped in swaddling clothes, in bands of cloth, as a baby held by his parents. The one we wait for and long for comes to us bound to all of us in our broken humanity willing to take near to him and to enter into all of the fullness of our human existence with its joy and its sorrow. The one we wait for is bound to us in a way that allows for the binding up of all the brokenhearted as we watch and wait and welcome him, may we also join in the work of healing 
and wrapping the world for the healing purposes of God. Amen.